In this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, we're talking about this stuff. It's a Sentium Materials PCTG filament, and I'm gonna be discussing some of my experiences with it and giving you guys some suggestions on how to get pretty clear prints like this out of it. And the whole reason why I purchased this filament in the first place is I was making the light up Zelda sword, doing the part printing for my friend Ashley over at Chip Builds and told her, hey, if you buy me the filament, I'll make you the part. She goes, cool. And that's how I picked this stuff up. Now, the reason why I decided to go with PCTG over PETG or even PLA is PLA has a yellowish tint and I didn't like that and it melts really easy. So that was out of the question too. And I'd worked with PETG in the past, but I wanted to try something different. So I remembered PCTG from when I worked at my old job as um, it was a material that was mentioned, but production got outsourced before we got it in house. So no big deal. Now this is what it looks like in raw filament form and it has a very nice neutral clear color unlike PLA like I've mentioned which kind of gets that yellowish tint to it it's not the best now when it comes to printing it it's relatively easy to print I ran it at about 250 255 C on my Ultimaker 2 with an 80 degree build tack flex plate um, with build tack on it and that worked really good something to keep in mind is you do want to up your first layer height and you do have to remove this material from the print bed while it is still in about the 60 to 80 degree C range. If it drops below that, this stuff will literally weld itself to the build tack and it does not want to come up. I've also noticed the same thing with PETG. It just loves to stick to those kinds of surfaces if it is allowed to cool. So just something to keep in mind. I did try printing it with glue stick and Magigoo on top of the build tack, but I ran into some issues with that. So I just went back to the straight build tack not saying that you can't print it with those things. It probably would work. It's just, I didn't have very much material. So I didn't want to waste all my time trying to screw around, figuring out what worked when I had something that did work. So in the case of this print, it was done using Cura with vase mode at 0.5 layer heights with a 30 millimeter a second print speed, 255 degrees C on the nozzle, 80 on the bed, and about 50% fan cooling. Now I know what you're thinking, you ran cooling. And believe it or not, it actually worked good in this application. You don't wanna go blasting the material with 100% cooling as you do want the previous layers to stay warm, but it actually helps to have a little bit of cooling at some times, just so that way the material doesn't wanna droop a lot or you just don't run into problems with heat buildup, especially in tiny parts that can cause distortions, the nozzle starts smearing stuff you just you don't want to go through that so i highly recommend running a little bit of fan speed varied as you go now one issue that i ran into initially which turned out to be my fault with my printer is i couldn't get very good clarity out of the prints and i was wondering why well it turns out my nozzle was not getting as hot as the printer thought it was so a quick clamping of the uh, heat sensor fixed the problem right up I'm just mentioning that just because if you're not getting the clarity that you want, you probably need to bump the temperature up. This stuff has a maximum operating temperature of 280 degrees Celsius. After talking to the guys at Ascentium, it sounds like the sweet spot's around 270, which is obviously outside the temperature range of my Ultimaker. So you're in all metal hot in territory there. Just something to keep in mind. I would have printed it on the Thingomatic, it's just it's down at the moment and I don't know how to trick the software into going above 260 degrees Celsius on the nozzle, so that's why I just didn't even mess with that. Don't worry, I'll be getting that guy going again in the future and I really hope I can overwrite the firmware, but different video for a different time. Now, also I was impressed with the bottom layer clarity this one's not perfect as it ran a little bit slow, but you can still get some good clarity on prints that are thicker, especially if they have two or more perimeters, which normally can be an issue, but I was able to get some good stuff. 
Sadly, the print that I did that with got accidentally thrown out before filming. So I'm going to see if I can dig up a photo of it and overlay it, but yeah. So I guess in conclusion, my results with printing with this stuff have been pretty positive. I do have to say like any high performance material does have a little bit of fine tuning that's required to figure out what works best with your printer, your settings and all that stuff. But all things considered, it actually was pretty easy to work with. I personally, if you're trying to go for clear prints, would not recommend doing it on a machine that does not have an all metal hot end. If your machine does not have one, you can still print with it like I did. You just can't get the perfect clarity and you might have to adjust your speeds down a little bit to compensate to get good layer bonding. I mean, I'm probably going to order up some more of this stuff in the future and use it for high performance applications such as my GoPro rig, which is currently printed in PLA and there's nothing necessarily wrong with PLA. It's just when I shot the interview with Jimmy Shaw's tidbits over at the Maker Fair, all of our PLA equipment literally began to melt in the sun. So there's a good example of where a higher performance material probably would have worked better. And also it probably just makes the thing a little bit stronger. I'm probably slightly paranoid after I lost my camera in the ocean, but oh well. So in conclusion, I would definitely go back and buy more of this material. While my machine sadly cannot get to the temperatures that are required for superb clarity, I was still able to get some decent clarity with what I had. And for me, I'm willing to trade a little bit of the clarity for the fact that I don't have an all metal hot end. And I was still able to get some good layer bonding as is, so I'm not totally worried about it. So that concludes this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.